Hi, this is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta, and I'm here today to follow an Oregon trail of sorts, a trail of tweets and people who uh, engage in tweets. A tweet is a post on Twitter, a micro uh, blogging processing service in which uh, people write 140 characters or less. In those 140 characters or less, if they add an at sign, they can connect to someone else. They can mention them. They can reply to them in conversations, uh, and they can do so while they're using a hashtag, which is the number sign. Uh, a hashtag indicates that they're talking about a particular subject. Now, I want you, if you're a student of mine in, in a social networks course, to look at the hashtag for Maine. But today, uh, for NodeXL, I want uh, to go through a similar example, but looking at another state. We'll look at the state of Oregon. So. Having clicked the Node XL tab, I'm now going to click import on the left and look from Twitter search network. Now, you already should have done two things. You should have made sure that your Node XL version is updated to the most recent possible, otherwise Twitter search won't work. And you should have linked your Twitter account, which you should have signed up for, to Node XL. Uh, look for an earlier video of mine if you need hints in that regard. But for right now, we are going to look for the hashtag Oregon, making sure we spell it correctly. We're going to limit that to 500 tweets. We're going to add a tweet column collecting the actual text of the tweet to the Edges worksheet, and we're going to expand URLs and tweets. What that means is we're going to take little tiny bit uh, uh, web address shorteners, URL shorteners like Bitly and Owly um, that, that shorten web pages to small bits of text, and we're going to open them back up to describe what the real web page is that they're referring to. So now I'm going to go and look for Oregon. This may take a moment, and uh, so that you're not bored, I'll pause in the video. Okay, now these results are coming in, and as they come in, uh, we're going to take a look at the Edges tab and the Vertices tab. In the uh, Edges tab, we can find relationships between vertex 1 and vertex 2. What are the pieces of text that are in here? They're the names of Twitter users. They're user account numbers, or, 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 or uh, user account text uh, str strings. So we know that RDTN stream tweeted to RDTN stream. What does that mean? Well, we'll see that listed over here as simply a tweet. That means that the person only uh, posted a tweet with no reference to anyone else. In fact, if we look here, going over to the tweet column and read it, we notice there are no at signs. An at sign means that either there is a reply to, as in row 11 here, Nancy Kijuro uh, is replied to here, and then somebody is writing in German about Oregon, or perhaps they're mentioned. How do you mention somebody? You mention somebody by not having the first uh, uh, character uh, be an at. So you notice that this is a retweet uh, in which two individuals are mentioned. Uh, Wilfred BLS references SDMF for life and Zach Wild BLS, whoever they are talking about the Oregon coast, and then referencing some website. Uh, what website? We could find that in column... What column? Ah, column R. Okay. And Laud Dead Celebrate the University of Oregon track top. Wonderful. So... Um, that's fine, that's lovely, but we can do more than that. We can look at all these relationships, uh, and we can count them by looking at the number of rows and subtracting the first two, which are just empty fillers. So 560 minus 2 is 558 uh, tweets, okay, and made by how many users? 391 minus 2, 389. So, most people are just tweeting once, but some are tweeting more than once. OK, 
Okay, we can figure out by sorting here what the relationship type is, how social they are. Are they just tweeting a message or are they referring to others? Well, we know that from row three to row 228, there are mentions or replies. Uh, so that's the, about 225 out of more than 560. So most messages are without a social reference, but a, a large minority are with a social reference. Now, I want to visualize this network. This is an edge list here on the left. We want to go and we want to visualize. I'm going to visualize using Heron, Heron Core and Fast Multiscale, which is spring embedding. That is, it pushes away people to whom uh, a node is not tied, and it pulls in people to whom a node is tied by some kind of mention or reply. Okay. I can see some structure already. There are some people in the middle, and there's some people on the outside. I can see if I look very carefully that there are some uh, people who are engaged in this kind of kite structure here that's kind of tied into the rest of the network. There are individuals over here. If I drag them manually out who appear to be connected to nobody else at all, except this, that set of four nodes. So they're off in a corner having a conversation while everybody else is in, engaged in this larger network. Um, I also see some problems here. I see some people who are just tweeting to themselves. They're placed in the middle of the network. That's not handy um, because really they're isolated. I want to reference uh, that. I want to show that in my visualization. Well, how could I do that? I could do that by creating groups, by going to the option groups in the tab, grouping by cluster. And I want to put all neighborless vertices in one group. And let's see how we do here. Then I want to, once I've created groups, I want to go to my layout options, and I want to lay them out in its own box and support sort the boxes by group size, use the grid layout for groups that don't have many edges. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get an automatically generated picture of communities of connection. Here are all the folks on the left who are only communicating uh, with themselves. All the folks over on the right who are engaged in communications about Oregon with one another. And what can we see? There are a lot of dyads here, right? People who are communicating only with one other person. But there are some other uh, uh, groups that some of which communicate with one another a little bit. And they're having larger conversations. That's great. So I'm, I'm getting some... Uh, idea here about who's in, more involved, who's less involved. I can use autofill after I uh, collect some graph metrics. Now, I want to collect some overall graph metrics. Since this is a directed network, I want to, uh, though, get some uh, vertex in degree and out degree, find out who the most popular and who the least popular are. Maybe I might want to autofill that way. I also want to find out what the top items are when we're talking about the Twitter uh, posts that contain the hashtag Oregon. So I'm going to calculate those metrics. This will only take a moment. Okay, so now I'm going to head back, look at my vertices, and I want to engage in some kind of autofill. I'm just going to show you one autofill that I could engage in, which is vertex size. And I could think about that according to in degree. Who are the most popular uh, people in this Twitter network? The people who are most replied to or most mentioned. I want to make vertex size related to that. I'm going to look at the options and I'm going to make sure that we have vertex size from 1.5 to 20, maybe 30 even, okay? And let's autofill, see what we get. 
now we have some visual information that's telling us a bit more. It's telling us who the big players are. How do we know they're big? We know they're big because, look, they're the ones that are being referred to the most. Um, this is great. It's a good start. I want you to try to make some more choices. Uh, look at the Hansen textbook if you're a student of mine for some tips there. Think about what other characteristics of um, this network you could visualize to make some sense come out. But I want you to uh, take a look at a tab at the bottom as well in your work, and I'm going to look at it here as well. Look at the tab there that says Twitter search network top items. Uh, in that uh, document in which you're talking about this network, I want you to tell me what is being talked about when the most when people are using the hashtag main. Here, what are they talking about most when they're talking about the hashtag Oregon? Uh, well, we could find out what other hashtags are being used. Portland, Eugene, PDX, Roseburg. The 14th of February, travel and beer. Okay, we can figure out what web pages are being uh, linked to the most. And you could go through, and a good homework piece will, and take a look at those uh, uh, web pages and see what the subject is that people are, are, are forwarding to others. Finally, you can take a look at word pairs. What kind of uh, words are being brought together here? Uh, some descriptions of places. PDX is an airport. Uh, people are talking about the weather, the humidity, the temperature. This is what they're talking about in Oregon today. What are they talking about in Maine? Uh, you, my students, can find out uh, when you do a Maine search hashtag and uh, bring together the results in an automated fashion. Uh, describing what's really being talked about today. Now, maybe Oregon is going to be a little boring. Maybe Maine as a subject will be a little bo bit boring to you. Uh, in upcoming weeks, I'm going to ask you to choose your own hashtag and tell me about what matters over social media in social network communications uh, to you.